Give to the World Ministries welcomes you to another teaching by Ralphina Dotson. Ralphina Dotson is well qualified to share the message you're about to hear as she lives the principles she teaches daily. As you listen, we trust this message will encourage you, help you grow and develop into maturity as a believer in the kingdom of God. The word you don't know is the word that cannot help you, and the word that doesn't take root can never bring a harvest. Let this message take root in the ground of your heart as you listen to it over and over and take notes. Receive this message. Receive your harvest. Well, hi, it's Ralphina. It's Ralphina. I'm so glad to be with you today. I'm so grateful that um, we are coming through this thing, but we have to come through it with a different thinking than we've had in the past. We've got to come through it with an attitude that this is a time that is not supposed to take us by surprise, nor are we supposed to be the people that suffer. I want to, um, I want to, I want to give us some insight. That there's the scripture, and I want you to, the scriptures I give you for the next maybe five or six times we're together. I want you to take your scriptures. I want you to go to those scriptures after. You've seen the program, and after you've uh, uh, dealt with the teaching, and, and meditate on those scriptures so the insight and it re the revelation of the scripture opens to you so that you're able to see the parts that the language that we've learned through English and, and our speaking vernacular uh, has stolen the opportunity for us to see deeper. This is... Um, and I'm reading it from the new from the Amplified Translation. It's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. And I'm going to read this whole chapter to you um, down to uh, verse 9 because I want you to hear where we are and what God is expecting from us. We're starting to look like the world looks, confused and nervous and unaware and unprepared and uh, intimidated and all the stuff the enemy wants us to look like to the world. You see, he knows the world is watching us. And because we don't look like God says we're supposed to look and like we talk like we're supposed to look, uh, it, it discredits God and gives him, Satan, the devil, the liar, a stronghold. Okay, listen, it says, uh, chapter uh, 5, verse 2, it says, now. You, you yourselves know perfectly well that the day of the return of the Lord is coming just as a thief comes unexpectedly and suddenly in the night. We've heard this, the, uh, for those of you who've ever been to church, ever sat through services, maybe more than two or three, you've actually heard that scripture. Something about how he'll come through with looks like a thief in the night. Now, I realize there are some ministries now that are not talking about the end time. They're not talking about the return of Christ. They're talking about uh, uh, social issues and uh, ethereal, uh, extrasensualistic uh, uh, theories on how to be uh, uh, Christ-like and, and those kind of things. Time is out for that. We need to know what God needs from us because he left us here, brought us here, and developed us so we would be what he has need of. We've become an instrument, and now we need to know what we're supposed to do with what we've, we're supposed to be coming. Listen to this. It says, um, while they're saying, and, and this means while, while the world around us is saying, oh, peace and safety, all is well and secure. This pandemic has caused people to be so nervous and so concerned. So now they're opening up the businesses again. Oh, it's going to be so good. Don't be deceived by this. Don't be deceived. Those of you who love God, you have a responsibility to know more and to be prepared. It says, don't be deceived. He said, uh, the, while, they, while they are saying, Peace and safety, all is well and secure. Then in a moment of unforeseen destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains on a woman with child. 
and they will be absolutely not escapable. There will be no way to escape the judgment of the Lord. We are coming to a place where we're going to have to face God for our living, for the use of the giftings he gave us, for our talents, for our abilities, for our time. I think about how God's going to hold us accountable for our time. What did you do with your time? You mad about this man over here that's got this and done that, but he had the same amount of time you did. So here we are. But you believers, now I'm talking to those of you that are looking at this program that say you believe the Lord. I've come to believe that they're unbelieving believers, people who say they believe, but they really don't. And it's because we haven't been taught. It's because we haven't been exposed to teaching that will bring us to a place where our confidence can lay hold to the word of God. Listen to this. But you, believers, all you who believe in Christ as Savior and acknowledge him as God's son. Now, that's everybody who claims they're Christian. But boy, I'm telling you the truth. The church is looking weaker and weaker. We can't look that way. We can't think that way. Listen to this. It says, for all, for all you who believe in Christ as Savior and acknowledge him as God's son are not in spiritual darkness nor held by its power. So you can quit allowing the enemy's lies to prevail over everything you say and do. We have we become so ca- so callous and so comfortable with trouble. Oh, COVID! I have COVID. My sister has COVID. How dare you? That's an attack of the enemy. That's a a a a, a weaponized demon, a a a a a inspired condition. Something of affliction sent on the people in the earth. And the church is supposed to be the people that have the ability to say, no, not here. I mean, when God wrote, when David wrote Psalm 91, I'm sure he was facing something just as serious. Listen to this. It said, you belong, um, that you acknowledge that uh, God as Jesus Christ as God's son are not in spiritual darkness, nor held by its power, that the day of judgment would overtake you by surprise, like a thief. We can't be we can't be unprepared, unprepared mentally, unprepared physically. We can't be unprepared emotionally. We can't be the people that have to have have to have a drink, have to take some pills, have to have a, we get nervous and despondent and depressed. We can't be that. We've got to be the people that look like we don't care what's happening. We know that our God reigns. Listen, for you all, for for you are all sons of light and sons of day. Now that 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 touched me. I read it in the in the new uh, the King James. I read it in the New American Standard. I read it everywhere, but it says it best here. For you are all sons of light and sons of day. We do not belong to the night nor to the darkness. You don't belong to the plans the enemy has. You don't belong to the attacks that he's put in motion. You don't belong to the lies that he's told. I remember I had, um, I was praying for a young woman, and uh, she was she was so lamented. She was so sad over uh, some things that had taken place and choice that she'd made, and she was didn't realize it was going to be so the consequences were going to be so severe, and she was just crying and crying and crying. And I said, "Have you repented? Have you told the Lord? Ask the Lord to forgive you." Have you told him that you're willing to allow the Spirit of God to come over your mind so that you can see and think in another way so that your choices and your behavior will be different? Have you done that? And she said, yes. She says, but it seems like it's not going away. I said, well, uh, let me say this to you. I said, you're feeling what? Well, I just keep hearing it's just too late. It's just too bad. I said, listen. Are you a child of God? Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. 
I said, baby, that means that you're God's child. You are not Satan's child. A man across the fence can't holler across the fence and condemn you if your daddy's standing there saying, no, this is my child. You are a son of the light, sons of the day. You, are, you do not belong to the night. We are God's children. We're not the devil's children. We're not Satan's children. We're not Hasatan's children. We're not Lucifer's children. We're the most high God. We are the most high God. We are Yah's children. We are the children of God. We got to think of it that way. Listen to this. It says, so then let us not sleep in spiritual indifference. And that's how we've been. We think we learn up a little few scriptures. I'm, you know, I'm kind of mad. I'm, I've been a part of the ministry a long time, and I, I feel bad. I've, I've had to lament before the Lord and repent before the Lord because I, I, I taught what I knew, but I didn't know enough. I wasn't sure about enough. I didn't see myself from a perspective that I'm seeing myself now. And I'm asking God to forgive me, but give me an opportunity to fix any mess I made. We got preachers that's been preaching and supposedly teaching that didn't teach us anything to help us in this hour. None of us have prepared for this. We're, we're, we're subject to all the things that's happening around us right now. And, and, and God didn't intend for us to be that. And I want you to listen to the rest of this. It says, so let us not sleep in spiritual indifference as the rest of the world does, but let us keep wide awake, alert, and conscious, and let us be sober, self-controlled, calm, and wise. Verse 7, for those who sleep, they sleep at night. They sleep at night. Sleep at night, and those are who are drunk get drunk at night. They get drunk at night. The, the, the enemy comes in in a subtle darkness without your being aware of exactly what he's doing. He does it at night. But let me tell you the wonderful thing about our understanding is even when we get caught in the night, even when we get caught in our thinking, where we feel like we're in the dark and we feel like we've messed up or we feel like there's no hope or we feel like we missed out, every new day comes at night. Our job is to catch on to things. We got to be sharper, crisper in our thinking. We let some small thing dis dis dismantle us and, and dislodge us and defocus us and discourage us and Hinder us from coming to a place where we stand straight up in the things of God. But since we believers, believers, everybody say, I am a believer. I am a believer. I am a believer. I am a believer. I believe God. But since we believers belong to the day, we belong to the time when the light is up, where we can see. We belong to the time when everything is visual, we be, that's when where we belong. That's who we are. Listen to this. It says, we belong to the day. Let us be sober, having put on the breastplate. Now, all these years, you know, you, you go to this scripture and say, put on the breastplate, the helm and everything. But here's how it's supposed to be used. It's supposed to be used. It says, come against the wiles of the devil. But listen to this. It says, let Belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love. Our job is to cover our hearts and to extend ourselves in a place where we receive what God has and believe God, believe God, believe God. And a helmet, the hope and the confidence and assurance of salvation. My grandmother uh, lived to be 106. Well, I really found out she was my great-grandmother. But the point is, is that she was 106. So when she was about 95, 94 years old, she said one day casually, she was, she was making pie. She was rolling out pie crust. She said, oh, <laughs> I was a kid sitting there looking at her. I didn't know nothing. I know about teenage. She said, oh, she was rolling with the rolling pin. You never know whether you're going to help them or not.
I, I heard her say it. But I was devastated that she said it. Because I thought at 90, you don't know. And we have we have cheated the people that say they want to love Jesus and they want to know the word and they want to live right from a confidence to know that when you really accept Jesus Christ and your heart is right, you have a, a, the gift of salvation. We should know that if we don't know nothing else. Now that lie about once saved, always saved, I just want to put that to, to rest. You can do some things, the Bible says, that have grace and mercy forsake you. You'll look back and they're not there anymore because of the choices you made and the attitudes you had and the way you talked and the things you did. But if you stay in a place where you're constantly coming before the Lord, you know, I must ask the Lord to forgive me 10 times a day. I'm not ashamed to say I need, I need repentance. I need to be cleansed. I need to be helped. I need to be forgiven every day. We need it over and over. It says, for God has not destined us to incur, to mean to stimulate in him a desire, his wrath. That is, he did not select us to be condemned, to, to condemn us, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. God didn't save you, get you saved so he could beat you up. He got you saved so that he could maintain you. And so he's making available to you a shield, which is faith, a helmet, which is some salvation, something to cover your mind and your thoughts, protect you. He's, he's, he's given you the breastplate of righteousness. That's a gift from God. You can't get more righteous. You, I don't care where you are. If you've accepted Jesus yesterday, you and I got the same amount of righteousness. Now, how I walk mine out and how you walk yours out is two different things. That's a personal thing. That's between us and God. But I need you to hear us. This is a time. The time. What is the first word here? Is? We, are, we ourselves know perfectly well that the day of judgment will come when the Lord is coming just as a thief comes unexpectedly, suddenly in the night. The return of Jesus Christ is imminent. Oh, you go, is it going to come next week? I don't know. It may come five years from now. But I tell you what, if we are not in a position where it's time for us, to see the hand of God move in our behalf, we got trouble. I think about all the times, all the places, all the opportunities we've had to get ourselves in a place, in a position. You know, you get yourself in position. You know, you get ready to play on a team. You get on the field. You get to your right spot, your position. That position gives you an advantage. Our, our position, our place where we, where we stand, where we walk, where we think. That gives us a position. We have to find the place where we're supposed to be and be in that position so that when the time comes, we are prepared. I'm just determined in, in Jesus' name for us to get the point. The day of the Lord will come unexpectedly. We got the COVID. We got the COVID-19. We got the this. We got the that. And everything is happening around us. Do you know? It's very hard to go in a store now with the cash money and pay your bill. They don't want cash. You can't, you can't hardly get change anymore. Ask for some nickels and dimes. See, do they have nickels and dimes for you? If you don't have a nickel and dime to play exact change, they don't have none to give you. Our job is to recognize that the things the enemy is doing are things that are supposedly bringing about the evidence of God's plan for these last days. Here's a good scripture for you to read. Uh, Joel chapter 1, verse 15. Let's see, can we find Joel chapter 1, verse 15. Let's see, can we find it. I, I got this. Um, I'm just so grateful to the Lord that um, he's, um, he's given us a time of, 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 uh, of, of, of opportunity over and over again. He's given us a time. And, you know, we, we talk a good talk, but we don't walk a good walk. God's ready for us to get to a place where we look like God didn't lie. He didn't lie. His word is true. His word is truth. And all the things that we have to do to, to show God, here I am going back and forth, chapter 2. Listen to this, Joel chapter 
uh, 1. It says, listen, this is awake from your intoxication. Awake from your intoxication. What is that? Oh, we intoxicated by TV and by, by the movies and by the NASCAR. And we intoxicated by the shopping and the draperies and the new car. And the, we intoxicated by the new man, the new woman. We intoxicate, we're intoxicated by all kinds of stupid stuff. It says, wake up from your intoxication, you drunkards and weep. Huh? Wall, whale, all you drunkards of wine because of the flesh. Sweet wine that is cut from your mouth for a pagan and a hostile nation has invaded my land like locusts. You tell me we aren't being invaded. We're invaded now. All of a sudden, we're going to need, uh, um, uh, what do you call them? Get ready to give you inoculation, vaccine. All of a sudden, have you noticed? Have you noticed that they're saying things that they hadn't been saying before? We got, we got plant-based meat. Since when did we get plant based? Since when? All of a sudden, they've been planning this a very long time. They've been planning this a very long time. We don't know nothing. So now there's no, co they, they, they don't want to take coins anymore. You got to have a card now. You're going to need a vaccine. You're going to need a vaccine to go in the store. You're going to need one. Because until you allow them to do something that makes it clear you got the vaccine, you won't be able to buy or sell. That's the end time agenda of the new world order. We're not ready for that. We've allowed the devil to slip up on us unawares. They want our babies, our, our elementary school babies, our, our kindergartners and, 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 and our first graders to have an agenda in, within the curriculum to establish in their thinking the good news of transgender. How your little baby, he can be a boy today and a girl tomorrow. And anybody who's against it is a hater and a mean, cruel person. God made a boy and a girl. And Satan, even if you just, just do this, find a picture of the Baphomet. The Baphomet. Find a picture of that B-A-P-H-O-M-E-T. Look that up. It is a symbol of Satan, the king, prince of darkness, the king of lies, the, the inventor of seduction and evil, twisted perversion. And all this, this creature, the Baphomet, has breasts and, and a male genital. So now the enemy is trying to contaminate the atmosphere we live in, and it's taken the rainbow and perverted it so it belongs to the people that refuse to be what. And you, I have to say it, I believe this. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. I would say that a vast number, vast, vast, large number of the people who are embracing the LBGT community, they are people who've been molested and abused and neglected and felt alone, and now they are a part of a group that makes them feel welcome, and they'll march with it and endorse it just so that they find somebody that'll be their friend or love them or show them some interest or give them some attention. We live in a sad time where the selfie is the biggest thing we think of every day. The selfie, I'm, I'm looking... The, this is the new day, the new religion itself. The new, the new ambition, ambition is more. And the new intuition, the place where we are pursuing is now. We're not satisfied with anything. We're not grateful for anything. All we care about is this, the me, my, I syndrome. God says here, Joel chapter 1, verse 5. Because of the flesh, sweet wine that cut off from thy mouth for a pagan, a hostile nation has invaded my land like locusts. God wants us to be prepared and aware. 
Wail like a virgin, clothed with sackcloth for the condition we're in. We are in a bad condition, church. Those of us who say we're a part of the church, and I'll tell you the truth. I quit saying I'm a, a, a Christian. I quit saying that because I believe in my heart that that word has been contaminated and um, uh, just, just confiscated by people who want to say that they go to church. You know, that, I remember there was a movie that came out, and here was a, the gambling house and the hoochie house and the strip house and the drug house, and one man said to another, well, I got, well, how come you were in the church this morning? Oh, I got to the night service. Now, these people run in the den of iniquity, and they discussing how they was in the morning service or the night service. Our job is to start to elevate the thinking of what our God represents because the, the elevation of his image is in us. I want God to know that he, I'm on his side. Do, do, does he know you're on his side? I just give God praise for everything. Today is a good day. Read this scripture reference here in the book of Joel. And uh, read, read it because if you read it, you will find that there, he is speaking about the atmosphere we're in right now. I love the fact that the Lord gave us help. He wants to give you help so that you know. That's what this is for. It's just, it's not just some book, somebody selling and printing, large comp. I don't know who makes money off the Bible. I don't know who does. But I know this, that the copies that I've had, the copies over the years that I've had, have opened my mind so that I have a desire to be something more, something better, something different, something, a reflection of the God we supposedly say we love. So I don't say Christian no more. I say blood boss, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, conditioned believer. I'm a believer. Are you a believer? Well, it's time for a sacrifice. I'll see you next time. God bless you.